everyone welcome back in this video we're going to be talking about the ways in which you can find residency programs and how you can apply to them resources that I use to find residency programs. The first one is Residency Explorer. All you have to do is go to their website and create an account. Once you create an account, it will ask you to enter your details. These are like basic stuff like your step scores, the number of volunteer experiences, research experiences, and your citizenship status and things like that. So I had a 232 in step one and a 240 in step two. I had about 10 volunteer experiences and around two research experiences. If you want to know about my application in detail, you can take a look at this video where I've described each part of it. And I've also spoken about my USCE LORs and things like that. So anyway, coming back to this video, all you have to do is enter Enter these details and they will give you a list of programs now for example I'm a non US IMG right so this is the name of the program and this is the percentage of non US IMGs that are currently there in the program so here's how you interpret these four dots if the dot is white it says that my score is in the bottom 25 percentile of all the current residents at the program if it's gray then it means that we are in the mid 50s and if it is black it means we are in the top 25 percentile so that's sort of of like a way in which you can see in what score range do programs take students so now honestly like most programs do like a holistic review which means that your scores are just a part of your application but there are some programs that use a cutoff score and may prefer higher scores so that just differs from one program to another so now one mistake that you should avoid is that thinking that if a program has a high percentage of non-us imgs then you have a higher chance of getting into the program that may make sense but then the way i looked at it it was like a little differently okay so let me explain let's say program a has 60 percent non-us imgs and program b has 50 percent non-us imgs but program a has just 10 spots and program b has about 20 spots so program a ultimately will take just six non-us imgs whereas program b will take about 10 non-us imgs so if you look at it that way program b seems like a place where there's a higher chance for me to get a spot because of the number of spots so keep that one thing in mind So you may be wondering how do we find all these details all you have to do is click on the name of the program once you do that you get like all the details now i'm not sure how updated these things are but it will give you like a rough idea of all the objective things in the program like for example maybe the number of hours they ask you to work and the insurance structure and if they provide child care and if they have on-call meal allowance and, and if a program has a particular cutoff then they'll mention that as well your salary and the contact details of the program director and the program coordinator the link to the website you basically have all of these things over here so it has like all these details so you can like take a look at that and see if this program would be right for you so these are the details that a residency explorer gives you another website similar to this is known as Frida Frida gives you everything location wise so you can sort of filter programs based on what you feel is right for you and then you'll get like a list of programs another convenient thing about Frida is that Right? just outside you'll get to know like the number of positions and then you'll get to know if it's a university program a community-based university program or a community program so that's one thing that's unique about Frida which is not there on residency explorer and another thing about Frida is that you can get like this map kind of view which is quite interesting because if location is something that's very important you can just get this view and apply to those programs that are there in, in the place that you want to be in so that's also one more unique thing about Frida. Frida sort of tells you which program is a pre-match program and which program isn't. So pre-match program is a program that does not participate in an RMP and they sort of like give an offer to students just after the interview. If you want to know more about this, please take a look at this video on four different ways to match into a residency program in the US. This has like a detailed breakdown of the entire process of all the four ways in which you can match. Uh, so if you want to find a pre-match program, all you have to do is 
click on this particular thing so this will show you the programs that do not participate in nrmp i personally preferred residency explorer to frida because frida doesn't really give you the percentage of non us imgs it just gives you the percentage of imgs which means that it, it includes us citizen imgs as well as non us citizen imgs so that can be a little misleading so i personally preferred residency explorer to frida it was sort of nice to have because in case i wanted to like double check any information then i just use frida to see if everything's adding up so you can like check it out obviously you can see what works for you what doesn't and what's more convenient for yourself but this is what it was like for me the third resource that i used was match resident match resident was also really helpful because it provided some extra features that were not there in residency explorer and frida if you guys have watched like these two videos you know how tele rotations were like my only usce right and while i was applying although a lot of programs were accepting tele rotation as usce there were some programs that that was still not considering virtual rotations as usce so match residents database sort of helped me out because like i did not apply to those programs that accepted only in person rotations as usce the second feature which is like my favorite feature is like the interview link feature so it sort of gives you the number of people who've had a similar profile as yours and got called for an interview from this particular program so that was also one thing that sort of helped me see where would i have like a higher chance of being called for an interview another unique feature about match resident is that they have like interview experiences so if someone has like interviewed at this program in the past they sort of like give their experience over there and also another thing that was like really useful was uh the ECFMG certification requirement as an IMG you are required to have an ECFMG certificate in order to participate in the match although some programs only needed by february but there are certain programs that needed at the time of application that is around september so now for me i had step one step two oet everything ready but i got my medical degree only in august so i literally had just one month for credential verification and that was taking like a lot of time so if ecfmg certification is like getting delayed for you this can sort of help you find out which programs need you to be certified by the time of application and which programs are like a little flexible about it but if you follow me on instagram i'm sure you know that my ecfmg certificate just came like just two days before eras opened so it was like super last minute so that way like match resident sort of helped me with finding out which ones required ecfmg certification and which one didn't so before getting my certificate i applied only to all the programs that did not need me to be certified by the 29th of september but once i got my certificate on 27th i applied to all the others that i wanted to as well at the end of the day I did not want my application to be filtered out based on this thing. So that was one more feature that was really helpful. So having gone over all the resources for applying to programs, I'm going to be telling you all how I shortlisted all the programs that I wanted to apply to. I'm someone who loves creating excel sheets, so like I created one for the list of programs as well. Choosing programs is like a very subjective thing. Like some things may be important for some people and some things may not be important. I used Residency Explorer as my primary resource, so I arranged all of these things in descending order of non-US IMG percentage, and I went on the websites of each of the program to see what it is like. And then after looking at the program's website and all the things that it offers. like they always have like these tiny videos about the program and stuff so not like you can get like a complete impression about programs but it gives you like some idea of the program taking all of that into consideration i used to like give program stars out of 5 so i'd either put like one star two star three star four star and five stars Uh, and I also made a column for the number of non-US IMG positions. Like, remember how I said, like, if it's fifty percent non-US IMGs, but there are ten seats, then I would put this thing as five. So that was also one more thing that I added to this. Like, honestly, you can actually get an Excel sheet from Residency Explorer itself. You have to just choose the programs that you want and click this particular thing. Then it'll like create an Excel sheet and give it to you. But so this was all the data from Residency Explorer. Then I used Match Resident as a secondary resource from which I got the data for the number of people who got an interview with a similar profile as mine. And then I also got this thing called compatibility score. Then I put all of this together so that I could start picking whatever I. Like if I watched a video of a particular program and I didn't quite like it or I felt like I may not want to go there, then I'd not add it to the Excel sheet. So basically, my Excel sheet had stuff like five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars. 
up to two stars basically one star was basically nothing you may feel like all this excel sheet and stuff is like excessive and unnecessarily long but i personally wanted to like apply to places only where i genuinely wanted to go i did not want to like end up at a place where i feel i may not be happy like so that was pretty important to me so but i feel like it's okay for you to just match anywhere that where you have to go to the program's website may not be necessary but if you're like me and you want to like know the whole vibe of a program and i don't want to apply to places where you don't really want to go to then checking the website may actually be helpful now i have programs where i have a high chance at and programs that have high number of stars according to me so here i sort of had to strike a balance now i was sure if it's below four stars i'd have like second thoughts about it and then if it's like very few non us imgs and they are like highly competitive then i don't want to like spend extra money on that and you know sort of let it go to waste so for extremely competitive programs i did not apply to a lot i just applied to like a handful and then i did apply to the others which was sort of at the intersection of these two circles so that's how i applied to programs so on a whole i applied to like 125 programs i know that may seem on the lower end for a non us img but like i said i only wanted to like apply to those places where i genuinely wanted to be in and that's why it's like 125 but there are people who sort of view this a little differently they are like it's okay if i match regardless of where i go i'm like okay with it and them it obviously makes sense to apply to more programs but also applying to more programs has honestly become like a huge issue but we'll speak about that maybe in a separate video but as far as this video is concerned i'm just going to tell you guys is about how to find programs and apply to them once you have like the list of programs ready you can start applying to programs so i applied to programs around the end of september so what i did was i like chose all the programs and saved them and then from the saved list i applied to them once i finished filling my edas application the reason why i did this towards the last two weeks of september is because uh, you have to assign all your documents to programs uh, so if say your letter of recommendation has not come in yet or if your personal statement is not complete so you can't assign it yet right so this is another reason why you can like start initiating the process if you are applying for the match this year and if you're quite unsure of what what you can be doing now to prep for it take a look at this video it has like a complete detailed explanation about the whole application process edas documents important deadlines and all of those things so take a look at that if you want like some guidance on that process so anyway so in the last two weeks of september once you have all your documents you can like assign them to all these programs once you're done you can apply to programs remember how i said like on freeda you can find out if a program is pre match or not even over here if a program does not have an nrmp code it's highly likely to be a pre match program so that's about it for this video i hope you found it useful if you have any questions video suggestions or anything else that you want to know please type them in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thank you for watching and i'll see you next time